pace when it comes to this team, but you've just got to look at the football over the last four days and you, you struggle to kind of find, find a point to say where we're doing anything wrong because it's just amazing across the pitch. It was outstanding all over. and it's, You know, it's hard. I know Raheem got his hat-trick, but it's hard to, to really single anybody out. You know, we said at half-time it could have been five at half-time. It could have, could have ended up ten at night, and that's not being disrespectful to Brighton. They were just at it all over the pitch from the very first minute and even in 88th minute they're 5-0 up Bernardo Silva is still going press and everybody else is still going press and they're not taking their foot off the gas and I loved watching that tonight It just shows doesn't it how relentless they are but how passionate they are and how yes they are 5-0 up but they know that this season they could still end with those trophies, the FA Cup next week and then going into the Champions League there's still so much to play for. Uh, Sean have we got a contender for goal of the season with Raheem Sterling's third there? Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> Being so small. <laughs> it was a brilliant um, yeah, performance, it, though, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a delightful performance, but it was like we all, we all said at half-time, I think um, we created just as many chances and we managed to put them away. And like Dickie said, it could have, it could have been a lot more as well. Guess is that's that's just football though, isn't it? Like you say, I think we had a similar number of shots on on goal uh, when we played at Southampton. Yet we come up with a one, you know, we lose one nil, and then same again here. The ball ends up in the back of the net. So it is just one of those things because there is always a lot that gets said around those kind of defeats, but and for sometimes for the right reason. But it does just go to show sometimes football will be football, and you can't quite call why sometimes it happens in one game and why it doesn't in another. It doesn't look at it, this. Sounds um, the easy thing to say, but especially with City getting that goal early doors, you know, mm. it, it is massive for them. Um, but going back to Raheem's, I, I love this last goal. <laughs> I, I did. But, but it's four 0 up. The ball's bouncing around in the penalty box. He's got the desire to get there. Keeper's clattering. The centre half's clattering him. And you know, he made his own luck with that by being in the right place there. And at four 0 up, there's a lot of teams and a lot of players would have took the foot off the gas and maybe thought, you know what, I'm not going to go in there because I might get clattered here and get big games coming up. He wanted to get in there and get his hat trick. It also, um, there was something reflected in something you said um, earlier, Paul, in the Bernardo Silva goal. And it kind of, it came from the fumble, but actually the player that was putting the pressure on the goalkeeper was Gabriel Jesus. And I know he came off kind of with that selection of subs, but his energy throughout as well was terrific and gave us so much up there in the final third. Absolutely. And, and he's on the front foot all the time, um, especially in the box. You know, and, and as a striker, you your bread and butter goals are your, are your tap ins or the ones that rebound off the off the goalkeeper. And he's reacted more or quicker than anybody else mm. that's in that box to one to, to get his goal um, because he's on the, he's alive, he's 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 on his toes and he's waiting for that ball to come to him. Yeah, he's not waiting for things to happen. He's making things happen. And in the same way, Bernardo said he shot. A lot of people would have defender would have cleared it or goalkeeper would have got it but he's in the front foot getting in there and got in where it hurts as well. Now this season we've seen what's happened in the in the Premier League in the table as well and it's hard after you watch Manchester City perform like that perform how they did against Newcastle and to see that huge gap in points that there is at the between first and second because this City team are not a million miles away from that Liverpool side that I've seen throughout the season. I think they're better. You've got to give you've got to give Liverpool. Liverpool have been relentless in, in what they've done, and, and they've ground out results, and they've not been at their best. Um, and, and one player doesn't make a team, and I say it a lot. Yamerick Laporte for me has been a huge miss. It's like taking Van Dijk out of Liverpool's team; they would really struggle. And you know, and we all talk about the wonderful goals we're scoring, ten goals in four days, and, and everything else. But I think it was 14th clean sheet this season. Yeah. You know, and Ederson's right up there with um, the Popes and the, the Allisons and the Hendersons. And the, but that doesn't get mentioned a lot, you know, but people like to focus on, on the mistakes we've, we've made rather than focus on, on the positives. And defensively, again tonight, we, um, we were very good, but we make it very hard for teams to attack us because we win the ball back so high up and then we retain the ball so well when we get it. We spoke, sorry, Carl, we spoke no, sorry. about the press at, at half time, you know, and then you think, you wonder, like you say, if we get into the, the, the back end of the second half, are we going to let up a little bit? The press was relentless throughout, Sean, and, and I guess, you know, my question to you is how difficult is it to do that, to, to keep going with that energy, even when you know you're 4 0 up and you might slip into that little bit of, we've got this, we can chill? Um, I don't think they would ever get to that point where they sit back and, and chill. I think Pep's got it installed in them that they do the pressing um, the way the team does from the start to the finish. And it, it seems that if somebody does get a little bit tired, he'll take them off just to keep that, that level of intensity up on the pressing to catch people out. And 
obviously we attack higher up the pitch like when Mendy tackles somebody on the left and the ball goes out to the right and we create a chance for a goal now so that's something there that I was looking at 64 minutes you're losing and then Manchester City bring on David Silva <laughs> Phil Foden and uh, Alexander Zinchenko as well and you just think what 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 do we do, Paul? What do we do to combat this? Because you're bringing on Phil Foden's incredible, David Silva's incredible as well, and it just felt like Pep was showing the strength of this team and just giving them some minutes, keep them ticking over, and getting them ready for the next game where we'll probably see them feature through the entire 90 minutes. Uh, the Brighton players must have thought, turn it in, Pep. <laughs> 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 Give us a break here. Um, at the same time, you know, we're talking about the pressing at the end of the game, and, and I know we touched on it before, and we touched on it at half time, and I know Sean agrees with us. These players want to be in the team for the Arsenal game. They want to be in the team for the Real Madrid game. So regardless of 2-0, 3-0, 4-0, they're on the bench, they're starting the game. They're showing the manager that they want to be involved in it, and, and that's only healthy going through the team. You know, the, the, the team spirit's fantastic, but as an individual, if you're not starting tonight and you're Phil Foden coming on, or you're David Silva with all his experience, you're thinking, I want to be in that team on Saturday. One thing I wanted to ask uh, both you, Paul, and, and Sean, is actually how difficult is it to do what City do in that we, we change our personnel. We, we came into to this game. We'd made six changes from, from our last outing. We then, you know, make those three subs um, at, at the 64th minute, another couple changes. Yet the way that we play doesn't seem to change regardless of the personnel on, on the pitch. Like, granted, Kevin De Bruyne might be a little bit of an anomaly because he does things that not many people can do, if any. Um, but as a whole... It just seems to say consistently the same. How difficult is it to do that with constantly changing players? Paul? Um, I th that, that's why Pep's the best and his coaching staff are the best. Um, you know, that, that, what, what, we, what we're seeing tonight and what we've seen on Wednesday night and what we've seen for the last two, three, four years with the success we've got is the hard work in the training ground. You know, and the yeah. repetition um, going into the training ground, um, the sessions Pep's putting on because, you know, the, he's not got a magic wand. It just doesn't happen. You know, and I know we're talking about players improving under Pep. Um, you know, I'm a big believer that whether Pep's inherited players or he's went out and bought them, they've all improved. And I'll include David Silva and in I'll include De Bruyne, Sergio Aguero. They're already world-class yeah. players, but it's the work in the training ground and the attention to, de attention to detail that, that he's got. Um, and, and also the players have got to get credit because when it's repetitive and it's so intense all the time, it, sometimes as a player it can be difficult to actually go out and do that. Um, on a Saturday, on a, then on a Tuesday, then on the Saturday again. But every single player knows, regardless of what position they play, they know their job. And similarly, Sean, do you think that also then comes from the manager, that he has this infectious thing where the players do want to play for him, that the Duke players will drill these same drills time and time again just because they trust in Pep? Is, I guess that's the key word there. It's, it's got to come from a trust, hasn't it? Um, yeah, most definitely. Uh, you can tell by the way they play that they, they trust in the decisions that Pep makes, and as do we all, we we believe in his his choices, and that they, they work. And for me, um, the players are just showing it, and it's exactly like Dicky said: people want to play in these big games coming up, and they want to play throughout the season. So when you come on sub, instead of chilling because it's like four nil, you go on like if it's nil nil to try and create a goal or score a goal even. Now, we are talking all about this victory against Brighton 5 0. If you are just joining us and you've not actually watched the game, you can watch the game in full from midnight this evening uh, on City Plus. So make sure you do you go back, watch it, because it was a masterclass once again. We talked about all of the passes uh, in the Newcastle game, but again, we're seeing the work ethic and we're seeing this team really, really pushing so hard. And, and Paul, what, what is it like when it's the 88th minute and, and you're actually you're pushing for another goal? Because they weren't letting up. They were trying to get more. And as we saw with Raheem Sterling getting his hat-trick, they want to continue uh, and they want to keep attacking no matter what. They do, but that's that's nothing new, Kyle. Um, they've done that since day one when yep. Pep comes in. Yep. You know, the amount of, I think you, I know you love your stats about um, <laughs> how many times City have scored four or more goals. It's, it's crazy. Um, but that's because they've got that desire, they've got that hunger to keep going. And, and as well as pushing yourself as a player, they're pushing themselves as teammates to go on and on. And, you know, I, I quite like it. I know people say that when you watch the games now, you, you put this sort of crowd noise on. You know, I quite like it when you can hear what they're saying. And all you can hear is City players in the last 10 minutes telling each other to go and push, go and push each other, go and close them down. You know, and, and that, that, 
you can't buy that. You know, that's a desire that you've got to come in to be the best you can, mm -hmm. not just every single game, but every single day. And every single one of these players have got that. One player I wanted to, to mention um, was, was Eric Garcia. Again, I think it was a, another accomplished performance from him. Um, we saw him make way for John Stone, so he got a little bit of time as well. My question for you both is, um, and I was speaking to Kyle about this at half time, do you think Eric Garcia would be in contention to start in these big games, you know, in the in the FA Cup or in the Champions League? Or do you still think, may, or do you think maybe that is a, a step too soon, Paul? We'll begin with you first. No, absolutely. Pep doesn't mess about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Eric Garcia is not playing in these games just to make up the numbers. You know, he's playing in these games, well, one, because he's good enough. Mm -hmm. He's more than good enough. But two, to get game time under his belt and get the experience of playing and playing. And it was, we say all the time, Pep just doesn't hand out appearances to people yeah. for, for the sake of it. Um, and he's come in and yet another clean sheet in a game that he's played in. And he, he just looks so comfortable um, for a young player. You know, he, he doesn't look flustered at any time, even when he's under a bit of pressure. He doesn't mind going in where it hurts and giving the centre forward a boot, which I love. Mm -hmm. Um... And he's, he's vocal, you know, he's, he's so mature for, for a young age, you know, you can see him um, talking to Laporte, talking him in, getting Kyle Walker, who's an experienced international, yeah. you know, he's telling him what to do when they're defending, and, and that can only bode well for the future, as in, will he play in the big games, could he play in the big games, absolutely. Same for you, Sean? Yeah, I totally agree there with everything that Paul just said, to be honest with you. He, he's reading and his football IQ is, 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 is second to none, so hopefully he keeps improving at the rate he is. Now, we've got Edison, we've got Garcia, and we've got Rodri, who I'd say three of the coolest players uh, in terms of they just took their time. Every single opportunity when the ball was coming to them, it felt like they had so much time and space, but it felt like they were so relaxed on the ball as well. And when you are trying to uh, play as quick and as fast and pass it as much as Pep wants us to, having those types of players who actually it feels like they break up the game completely because they just find the perfect pass in the perfect moment. And that's what starts those attacks. It starts from the, the keeper. It starts from the defence time and time again. And I feel like that's what makes the attacker's job slightly easier is that you've got those defenders behind you who can play balls and distribute just the way they do. It must be a dream to be an attacker on this team with what <laughs> oh, they've got behind no. them. You know, and you start with Ederson, you can see them... How many times in a game do you see him pinging 60, 70 yard pinpoint passes? You know, he could have played outfield in any team I played in and been the best player. You know, he's, <laughs> wow. he, he's that good, <laughs> he's that good <laughs> with the ball at his feet. And, you know, and it comes with confidence in your own ability and the confidence that your teammates give you. And, you know, Rodri, for example, every time he, he knows what he's doing before the ball comes to him. He's got a picture in his head all the time and he's so calm and composed with it. He might not always hit the 40-yard passes and put somebody in like De Bruyne did or the 25-yard ridiculous pass David, David Silva put in there at the end oh. but he keeps the ball and he keeps he does the things that don't always get noticed that, that maybe the other people in, in the team that have got that little bit of gold dust don't do but it's so important to have them in the team Sean, for for you as well, when when you look at that control, I guess then what it allows us to do, which we we do speak about a lot, is is dictating the the rhythm of play, and that see, seems to be something that City are masters at when to slow it down and, and and when to pick it up, which I get I guess then in turn is also another great thing for the attackers. Um, of course, they're they're so patient in the way they play, but they move the ball so quickly at the same time, just waiting for, say, tonight, the Brighton team to, to make that mistake where they can pop it through the, um, between the lines and start off great attacks for through balls. But um, just watching them play, it's amazing. I, I can just sit there and watch it all day if I had the choice. Yeah, same. It, it's incredible, and I feel like when you are looking ahead to the rest of this season, but also to next season as well, football is going to be coming thick and fast, Paul, and actually to keep this, to build this momentum and to keep it going into next season, we know that they're going to be title contenders anyway, but other teams must be looking at the way Manchester City are currently doing this and thinking we're going to have to raise our games again because they are winners. They've got that mentality to be winners. It's not happened in the Premier League for them this season, but next season they're going to come back and they're going to want to win it. Absolutely, and, and look, regardless of whether they win the FA Cup and then win the Champions League, they'll be hurting about what's happened in the Premier League because it's their title that, that's been taken away from them and, and they'll be wanting that back next season. Um, possibly... The, 
the short break in between seasons will help them because the momentum we're gaining at the minute is fantastic. And I've said it all along, that this Manchester City, not just the team, the squad, for me, is the best as a squad. Um, but the most important thing is keeping people fit. You know, if, if we can keep people fit for a majority of the season, you know, last season, the season before, De Bruyne was out for a bit, Sergio was out mm. for a bit, we've seen Laporte, Mendy. You know, if you can keep, not your big players, because they're all big players, but you keep a majority of that squad fit, there's nobody that can touch them for me, not just in the Premier League, but in Europe as well. I think that's part of what we were talking about before. And Sean, I don't know if you feel the same way about this, but actually we are waxing superlatives here about the team and, and it is like poetry in motion, but it still feels like there is another level that this team can go to. And I know that is mad to say, and Sean, tell me if I'm wrong, but it does feel like that that could be the case if all these things fall into place, no injuries, keeping the momentum going and also maybe just strengthening the opposition. It feels like we could go to a whole new level. Yeah, I have to totally agree with you there. Um, if you, For example, if you look at the performance today, how well they played and how many chances they made and goals they scored, and it reminds me of when they blew everybody away um, two years ago and even to a point last season where they was in a title challenge with Liverpool and, and beat them at the end of it. So I think if we can keep everybody fit, like everybody's saying, I think we'll be flying next season. I think as well it's worth pointing out, we didn't get too um, too much time to delve into it before the game, but the Brighton team that we're playing have, have come back very strong since the restart, you know, I think they've just, they've managed to secure um, staying out the relegation zone, so maybe that was a little bit in the mind, but as a whole actually, they they had one of the best comeback um, forms from the restart, so I think you have to say actually, as, as easy as City make it look, it's, it's not that easy at all, the teams that we're coming up against. No, it's not. And uh, look, I've got a lot of respect for Brighton and Graham Potter. You know, he's done an unbelievable job. And yeah. we talk about um, teams, Liverpool's philosophy, how they don't change, Pep, how we don't change. They have stayed up with probably one of the lowest budgets, mm -hmm. if not the lowest budget, by keeping their philosophy and, and believing in it and not changing it. And they are difficult to play against. Yeah. You know, and um, even when you do the high press, they still take chance. They're still comfortable on the ball, um, which makes tonight's performance even more impressive. Wanted to ask you, Paul, off off that because it's something that Pep's done, um, and like you say, Klopp. But how hard is it to to keep with your philosophy and believe in your ideas when there are going to be so many other external factors probably weighing in with a pressure and people shouting at you? you? You know what? It's a lot easier to keep your philosophy when you're winning. Yeah, because very people, true. Because people don't <laughs> people don't question you on that. For the likes of maybe Graham at Brighton and a club like Brighton, it's it's really difficult to stick to your guns because if you're in a relegation battle and um, and you're losing games, then you know there's pressure from the fans, there's pressure from the media, um, there's pressure from the board yeah. upstairs as well, and the Brighton board have got to take credit on that as well. Now, um, there's someone that there's a lot of pressure on him at times. Everyone's very outspoken about him, and tonight he decided to reply with three goals. That's Raheem Sterling, of course, and we've caught up with him to see his thoughts post game. So, Raheem, congratulations today. That's your seventh goal since the restart. How confident are you feeling in the front goal right now? Yeah, um, it's good to be, good to be back. You know, uh, being in lockdown is that was the only thing I was thinking about is you know having that, that scoring feeling again, um, and you know good to, to start on a, a good run. And that's the 19th time now that we've scored five or more goals under Pep. What does that tell us about this team's attacking talent? Yeah, we know how we are um, as an attacking team, um, and you know we've been a bit disappointed um, this season with some of the games we've had because we've had chances, and um, you know it was another game that. Um, you know, we took our chances, and when we do take our chances, we're frightened. How much do you think competition within the squad is like driving up, like the level of performance? Needs to be worth, that needs to be How much do you think competition for places is driving the level of performance within the squad? Yeah, I think that's that's always something great to have within the team. You know, you don't want players to be comfortable. You want players on their toes, and you know, it's a credit to the manager. He keeps everyone on their toes, um, and players have to work for their position and work to, to you know, to have a deserving start in the, the, the starting eleven. And given the number of goals we've scored recently, do you think we're peaking at the right time ahead of the FA Cup and Champions League? Yeah, I think that's always been the, the mentality since we got back. Uh, we know we have to get up to, to scratch and get into form because we have an important run into the end of the season and we know we've got some massive games coming up. So, yeah, we just need to continue, uh, finish the Premier League strong and um, hopefully finish with a few more competition. And do you think we've sent a message with the amount of goals we've scored going into those games? Um, I think, yeah, game by game, you know, um, the, each game will be different. Uh, but we know we, when we play like that, um, we're, we're really, you know, scary to play against. Okay, we'll play today. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers.
Raheem Sterling there talking after his hat trick today against Brighton. Couldn't find his match ball. I thought I thought he, he he's made sure that's safe, hasn't he? He's made sure he picked it up, he's put it away. Nobody is getting a hold of that. What what do players do with those match balls? Um, I don't know. I never got one. No, I, did, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a few of them. Not like your teammates sign it and write little, sometimes nice messages on it. Sometimes <laughs> a banter flies around on it, and then and then you go and keep it. But you know, you know, an old man like me, but it's, it's nice to look back on. Yeah, definitely. I can only imagine, Kel, I'm sure you're the same. <laughs> yeah, the closest I've got was the Soccer AM hat-trick ball. That's it. That's yeah, at least you got one, mate. No, I got one. Yeah, you got, you got one of those. Um, I will, off, off Raheem Sterling, though, and he touched upon um, a few of the things we've spoken about, but we, we, we've got Jesus who can do it. Um, but, but, Sean, do you think he's got the capability to play as a striker? We've seen it, I think, trialled a few times by Pep towards the end of game where he's moved him into that central position. Do you think that is a position that Raheem Sterling could play if he wanted to? Yeah, I think he showed that in the in the game just now. To be honest with you, his his hold up play when he was up there was good. Considering he's he's obviously smaller than a lot of them, he he's strong enough to hold the ball up, bring his midfielders into play, and he gets in behind as well to stretch the defenders. So he's got all the attributes, to be honest, to be able to do it. Definitely. If you're looking at some of the uh, stats, as always, as I'm doing, uh, I was sent this picture and Jamie Vardy, he leads the way in Premier League goals of 22. But Raheem Sterling now, he's sitting in fifth with 17. He's overtaking Sergio Aguero, who's got 16. So he's pushing to the, the top level of your Jamie Vardy's, your Aubameyang's, your Danny Ings as well. These players that I talked about week in, week out of scoring goals, goal scorers, centre forwards, strikers. And Raheem Sterling is managing to do that as a midfield attacking player. But it just shows, doesn't it, how much he's improved. Because people used to always say he can't finish. He, he can't put things away. He clearly can because he's doing it week in, week out now. It all goes back to that hunger and desire that we keep talking about with him mm -hmm. to actually go and score goals. And, you know, you hit the nail on the head there, Kyle. You look at your Ings, your Vardy's, Aubameyang's sort of, Aguero's. They're out-and-out -out strikers. Yep. And, and Raheem's played the majority of the season, if not all the season, bar a couple of games as a wide man, whether it be in the left, whether it be in the right. And um, can he play as the number nine? I, I like him in that position because defenders don't know what to do with him because his movement's so good. When he comes in short, they don't want to go in with him because he knows he's quick enough um, in behind. He can play up against them because mm. he's got a low centre of gravity to turn them. And it, it causes a whole new problem for, for the opposition teams, you know. A different problem from what Aguero will give them, a different problem from what Gabriel Jesus will give them. Um, because Raheem game intelligence he mixes it up so much how much of that is and it might be 50 50 split is it individual and is it team because like in in today's show we spoke about how jesus is getting all these goals not an out and out striker raheem sterling getting all these goals not an out and out striker of course it comes down to the individual but i guess part of that as well is the team play around it just allows each player to thrive in whatever position they're playing in of course it doesn't they know it. I've got to go back to it. It's what they do in the training ground. You yeah. know, at time in games, there's instinctive things that happen, a little bit of magic um, by De Bruyne or by Sterling or Bernardo Silva or Mares, or we could go on and on about individual talent. But it's, it's the movement and the rotation and, and the work that they do in the training ground, the, the team play that they do, knowing where everybody's going to be for a majority of the time. Mm. You know, if, if one of the wide players go inside, the full backs go on, you know, if one of the centre forwards come short, how often do we see one of the midfielders being the third man running? Yeah. Um, so so th that, that all comes down to the work and the training ground that they're doing, but having wonderful players helps as well. True that. Definitely does. We talked about all of those wonderful players behind the strikers and how wonderful it would be to play in this Manchester City team as an attacking player. Right, we've been asking people to use the hashtag WNRH and we've picked out some tweets ourselves as well. Now, uh, City Chief, at City underscore Chief, have... Um, tweeted some Jesus stats. Gabriel Jesus is the first Brazilian to score 20-plus goals in all competitions in successive seasons for a Premier League club. No other Brazilian has ever done that, wow. which I think is incredible. It shows, doesn't it, that he's got so much to his game, but he gets the goals as well. Opta Joe have been tweeting, uh, this is the 32nd time that Manchester City have scored four-plus goals in a Premier League game under Pep Guardiola since the start of 2016-17, and this is more than any other Premier League side. And I think at times as well, it's easy to forget um, how phenomenal Edison's been. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Man City have tweeted, uh, 50 lockouts for Edison that's yeah 50 Premier League clean sheets now for our goalkeeper so 
it's it's incredible and maybe he's in the race for the uh, the golden glove as well uh, and then sporth have tweeted about raheem sterling everyone is talking about him in all competitions this season 27 goals eight assists three hat tricks two braces career best goal scoring season achieved the most goals scored in all competitions by any premier league player this season and they've said superstar which i think we can agree he definitely is and danny uh, has tweeted us at danny underscore motion saying golden glove race getting tasty come on edison nick pope 14 edison 14 dean henderson 13 and allison 13 as well we do forget about this at times paul don't we how incredible edison is because he's, he's great with his feet but also these clean sheets he's proving to us how good of a goalkeeper he actually is oh he's amazing and, and he's up there with the best mm. it's simple and has been not not just this season but the last few seasons as well so it's no surprise to me i keep banging the drum about it you know even for a striker to stop talking about how good we are going forward but concentrating because it's it's a finger that always gets pointed at man city or that they're soft defensively you know they're letting goals too easily but the stats there speak for themselves, you know. And Ederson is, uh, Allison's a wonderful goalkeeper. Dean Henderson and there's some truly world-class goalkeepers. But for me, Ederson's the best. I'm not saying he's better than the others, but he's the best suited to play in this team. I also feel Edison was the one that actually was the catalyst of change for goalkeepers, you know, but to have the, 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 the keeper that came in that had the confidence to play out at the back and then it was only since then did you see other keepers start to try to emulate that. And how, how difficult is it, Sean, for a goalkeeper to, to have that composure in what is arguably the most dangerous part of the pitch, but then also have the patience to maybe see a run from Amares? You know, I bet you would have loved to have played uh, with Edison in there. Uh, it's it's amazing to see what he can actually do. Um, when I was at QPR, we had Julio Cesar, and he was pretty tidy with his feet. But I think Edison has taken it to a whole nother level. Um, his vision and the quality on his passes that he sees, his composure, it's almost like he's a centre midfielder, but just, just plays in goal as a sweeper and can just, just use his hands sometimes whenever he feels like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, he, he's done an outstanding job in it. If I ever got the chance to play play in that team with him, it, it's just it's, it's perfect because you can just run off the back of people and he will try to find you. And also, uh, Paul said that he, if he played in any of the teams that Paul had ever played in, he'd be the best outfielder, uh, uh, yeah, player ever. Which I think is uh, is something, <laughs> is something definitely. Now, one more tweet we have got, uh, which I do want to mention, is from Shay Given, uh, and he says, "Really saddened to hear the passing of the great Jack Charlton, absolute hero in Ireland growing up. Thoughts and prayers with his family and friends. We're all part of Jackie's army. Hashtag R.I.P. Jack Charlton. And we here at Manchester City just want to extend that and say." we are all saddened as well to hear that passing today because it's heroes of people you've you've heard of growing up and you've watched back on as well uh, and yeah it's just a, it's a sad time Cal. Oh absolutely and, and what's been really nice is that there's been some really wonderful stories shared on on the radio there's kind of been lots of shows centered around it and um, I'll be honest I knew some of the amazing things that he'd done for football but actually not been aware of how many things he'd done and affected how many clubs and players and and I guess people like that Paul you know that they're, 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 they're once in a generation aren't they and when they have an effect not only on, on the game but also outside the game yeah just not an, an amazing football man but an, an amazing person as well you know world cup winner yeah um <laughs> his managerial career and then the difference he made um with the republic of ireland you know and, and at, at a time where there was a lot of doom doom and gloom surrounding it and he's just been a character throughout his career and helped so many people so you know i really um here here to what she's just said there we do send all our thoughts and condolences to his family as well. Um, OK, we can now hear the thoughts of our manager, Pep Guardiola. Here's what he had to say after our 5-0 victory. Pep, that was um, a pretty sensational performance and um, capped by Raheem Sterling's hat-trick, I suppose. Yeah, not just for Raheem, of course, when someone has scored three goals is a, is a beautiful night. But I think all the team was ready and uh, we played really good again and yeah so now today mathematically we are in the Champions League next season we won on the pitch what uh, this club deserves to be and hopefully on Monday the sentence will be good and we can play because we want uh, playing playing football with that you mentioned the, the decision on Monday so you know, I'll ask you I mean it's, it's clearly a huge day for the for the definitely. for the club definitely 
Are you confident? Are you? I'm so confident. Yeah. Because talk. I trust with the people. I when I came here, I knew the people are in charge. I know with this situation happened for maybe 90 percent of the people we are here who are not here. But I'm so confident because I trust with the people we work together, and uh, yeah, hopefully can be there. Let's talk about the game. Um, I wonder when you watch that back, you're, you're a very exacting coach. You always want better and better. What what do you think you could have done better? Because I'm struggling to find anything. Well, we are 21 points behind Liverpool. No, I mean in this game. <laughs> well, and this game was quite good. There are things that the moment that we have to be more controlled. But it's a team like demand you a lot for the way they're pressing because there's a team like... Uh, like uh, they try to play, they use really well the two holding midfielders. They put a lot of players in front. When the ball is in the sides, when the fullbacks they attack quickly with the fast players with Trussard. With uh, uh, so it's a it's a good team. They play good. It's the first season from um, from from Byton uh, with a new manager with Graham and, and, and next season they will be better. It's a team like uh, what they propose. I like it. I enjoy watching them. And uh, yeah, uh, that's why I give credit what we have done today. And, and, and I guess you remember the game against Swansea with Graham Potter yeah. in charge yeah. last season, yeah. when they were fantastic. Yeah, the first half they destroyed us. We were 2 0 down. And it was, uh, yeah, it was really difficult for us, really, really won. Uh, and, and now I knew it from the past when he was in another country, came here to play Europa League, I think so, against Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. And they played incredible well. And they won. So he's an, he's an, an ex-top manager. So I know he will become one of the greatest managers in this country in the next years. Perhaps it was a wonderful performance. Thank you very thank much. You so much. Thank you. Thank you. Alex, thank you. Thank you. That was Pep Guardiola giving us his thoughts after our 5 0 win at the Amex. And I love it because you think, surely, come on, you can take it out after that to that performance. Yeah. Ever the perfectionist, Paul, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he, he said it was quite good. Paul, what, I, quite I, good. I actually thought it was a stupid question to ask him because he's never <laughs> ever going to admit <laughs> that, it was, um, that it was perfection. But th th that's why. Um, they're, they're so good to watch because the players do, just don't push each other. They've got they've got Pep Guardiola pushing them all the time to be better all the time. And that, and you know when you are playing and you are playing well, sometimes you, the last thing you need is constantly to be told how well you're doing because that's when you slip into your comfort zone. You know if you're doing well and the manager or your teammates are at you to say look you can do it better, you're like hang on a minute I'm going to show you now. And I think that's what we're saying. Definitely. Sean, what have you made of tonight's performance then? Pep summed it up, saying it was quite good. But as we said, he is the perfectionist. Do you think that this team can continue to get better and maybe continue this consistency? Yeah, I, I most definitely think that I'll definitely keep the consistent side of it. Um, it seems that um, the more games they play and the more goals that go in, they seem to be able to pick up um, a great rhythm, which I'm hoping is happening now, obviously, with the games in hand coming up. That's what we're all hoping for here. So to keep that rhythm, Paul, you just want to see much of the same, I'm guessing, now as we head into this next kind of big week of football for City. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm sure on, on Wednesday night that there'll be changes again. But the changes won't upset the, the form that they're in and the confidence and, and how they play, because yet the players that will come in on Wednesday will have a point to prove themselves. The changes that will be made next Saturday against Arsenal, the players that come in there, and, and they're, they're keeping each other on their toes, but really pushing each other at the same time as well. Gentlemen, wonderful stuff. Thank you so much. Um, Sean, massive thank you to you for joining us at home, and we'll have you back on the show very, very soon. Nice one. Thank you, guys. And a massive thank you to our guests in the studio, to Paul Dickoff and to Cal Walker as well. Been an absolute pleasure. Tap top, top top, pardon me, with the result to match. Um, we will be back for the next game, as we are every game with We're Not Really Here. And if you've just joined us or you're thinking, I would like to go back and just watch that beautiful 90 minutes of football, you can do just that from midnight tonight on City Plus. You'll be able to watch the full game in full on there. We'll see you at the next game. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Come on, Manchester City.